So welcome back to the studio. After last week's little rowboat on the beach painting, I thought, time to venture beneath the waves. I wanted to paint a sea turtle for you, and so I have. Now, this is part one of two. I'm going to be painting, obviously, the background and the sea turtle first, and then next week I'll paint the coral reef and maybe do some special effects and give it that little extra twist. So, you know the routine. Sit back, relax, bathing suit at the ready maybe, and watch me paint the sea turtle. And don't forget, watch it all the way through to the very end. Happy painting, people. So here's my canvas, 16 by 20. And today I start off by painting it with this, buff titanium white. I like to use buff titanium under wildlife, but in particular, it lends a nice warmth to my painting. Now, let's find a nice position for it, somewhere about here, I think is about right, at a nice angle. I like to leave a little bit of room at the base here for maybe a nice coral reef. To secure the photograph in position, I'll use a couple of strips of masking tape, one in each corner, one there, and no, not there, one there, that's it. Because I'm painting on a canvas, I always slip a hardback book underneath. It supports the canvas and stops it bowing in the center. Today I'm using some of this, and this is graphite paper. As you can see, it's well used, but it will be sufficient for our drawing today. Slip it under the photograph and make sure you've got it the right way up. By choice, I always use a biro to do the outline, but don't press too hard. If you don't have graphite paper, just use a regular pencil rubbed on the back of the photograph. I want to do a little check before I carry on to make sure I've got everything lined up. I also don't want to do too much detail here. I just want the basic shape. Top tip, make sure you rub out most of the outline. It wants to be just visible. To get my painting started, I'm going to be using some acrylics. I've got a nice ultramarine blue, a nice green and some turquoise. I'll be using a couple more colours as well, like this burnt sienna and maybe some titanium white as well. I'll also be using a couple of basic bristle brushes, three quarter inch or half inch. My first colour is some of the turquoise with a touch of white. The turquoise colour tends to be a little transparent. You can see here on the right that where I've thinned it slightly with some water, it's well almost see-through. So use white to make colours opaque. For the job of cutting in close to the sea turtle, I changed to a half inch synthetic brush, just a flat brush at this stage. Again, nothing special. Now, let's add another colour. I've got some of that original colour, which was a cobalt blue, and I'm adding a little bit of ultramarine blue to the mixture. Now, acrylics dry very fast, so getting them to blend takes a little bit of effort. As you can see, that turquoisey colour has dried. I'll do a little bit of soft blending here, trying to blur the two together, but do take care at places like this where you've got a colour change behind the flipper. It looks very obvious. Whilst the paint's still damp, I just use my finger to blend it gently. I've added some burnt sienna to my plate and I've mixed it with some of the cobalt and ultramarine blue. It makes a nice sort of grey colour. And I'm going to be using this for some background detail. In the murky depths of the sea, things lose their definition a lot more quickly than they do on land. Notice how I just use that brush to scrub in some basic shapes. Again, no detail. I want it to look very, very murky. If I want more detail, I'll add it, but in the foreground. I also change colours and I scrub in some sort of basic shapes here and there. But I try and make them go up behind the turtle so it looks like he's swimming in front of them. Try not to paint around his outline. Here and there, you see, I use more of the burnt sienna colour. At this stage, I'm just trying to block in the basic shapes and forms. To 
make my reef look more solid, I fill this area completely. I don't have quite so much of the background blue colour peeking through. If you want to preserve your acrylic paints, just add a little spray of water and cover with another plate. As long as the air doesn't get to it, it'll stay good for a couple of days. Now, time to let my painting dry before I can start on the sea turtle. So here's my painting so far. And as you saw, I used acrylics for my background. Could I have used oil paint? Absolutely, I could have done. But then I would probably have to leave it to sit for at least a week or two so that it stiffens up. That way I wouldn't smudge it if I got my hand on it. In this instance, acrylic works out well. So this is what they call a mixed media painting. Now, a point to remember with this is if you're using acrylics, which are water-based, and oils, you have to get the water-based products on first. You can paint oils over the top of this, but you can't do it the other way around. Oils are non-stick, and you might find that if you put acrylics over them, that they either discolour or, or start to peel off. So always use your water-based products first. Anyway, I might still be using some acrylics in the foreground, but I think it's time to get into some oils for this lovely sea turtle. Carry on sitting back in that comfy chair. To paint the sea turtle, I'll be using this, water mixable oils. I'll be using a dry brush technique. I've got just a few basic colours, and really apart from that, maybe only another one or two will be needed. You can see the brushes I'm using are very, very cheap, basic, just angled brushes. Again, nothing special, but short, stiff bristles. I want to work on this section of the sea turtle first on his back. I list the colours down below, but as you can see, I've arranged them on my palette. The little blobs of paint are actually on the right side of the palette, in other words, the plastic coated side, which I fold back. Now I'm drying the paint on the back of the palette, which is just the papery area. It soaks up some of the oil, but leaves the pigment for us to paint with. The paint is applied almost as though you were sketching or colouring in. It's a very lovely technique to use and one that I've been enjoying for many years. It's just like shading. You can apply small amounts of paint and with gentle pressure you can build up areas of colour. Because the brushes are angled I can come right up to the edge of a line. I can even add basic details at this stage just by using the brush on edge. It takes a little bit of experimenting, but once you get the technique working, it's rather wonderful. As you can see by looking at the reference photograph, I'm already developing that characteristic fan shape on the sea turtle's back. I'll use a little bit of time lapse for this. It's a slow process, so rather than have you see and watch for hours upon end. I'll just speed my way through this, but we'll come back to this area and add some more colour and some more detail a little bit later in the video. On this part of the sea turtle, you can see how I managed to get really, really sharp detail by angling the brush and just sitting in one spot just letting it wiggle. By pressing firmly with the brush, you can actually force the paint down into the weave of the canvas. This is how you develop depth into your painting. You can add several layers of colour one over the other and blend them together in the same way. Now, if you've seen any of my videos, you'll know that getting into a pickle is, well, something, something of a habit, I'm afraid but don't have any fears with doing this technique. It's very, very fixable. Again, you'll see later on that I go a little bit offline here and there and I smudge a couple of areas together. As I say, very, very fixable. Apart from using the brush just to shade with, you can also lay it on its side and just do a few short strokes to add a little bit of extra detail at the edge. You 
using that same brush and going into some burnt umber. I'm going to just brush mix these again on the paper palette. I want a slightly darker mix. Using a dry brush technique means that you can build up colours one on top of the other. In fact, you can almost add an infinite number of colours as long as you don't rub them into each other too hard. Here you see I'm just allowing a little bit of that first colour to peek through and adding a little bit of extra detail here and there. As I say, this is all being applied with the paint almost completely dry. In fact, if you touch the painting, you get nothing back on your fingers. You have to really push at it with the brush to lift any of the paint off again. Here you see I'm just adding a little bit of extra detail to sort of the edges of the shell. Now let's do some repairs. As you see here, I've got another small angled brush, which I've made just damp. Remember, these are water mixable oils. So with a just damp brush, you can go in and lift off the surplus paint. Voila, just like magic. You can even rub out that little piece of extra color there. Give it a few moments, and when it's dry, you can go back over it with more oil paint. If you enjoy my tutorials, don't forget, give this painting a little like. You can even subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, ring the bell, so that when I drop a new video on the channel, you'll get a little message in your inbox. Thank you. Now, if you look at the reference photograph, you'll notice that around the head and neck area, there's lots of little wrinkles. Once again, I just use that little angled brush on edge and add the smallest little touches of detail here and there. Also notice that there's some small sort of scale type shapes, just little dots and dashes here and there. I just turn the brush round, so I'm using the point of the brush, but I'm using sort of the back corner of it. Here there's some sort of nice little mottled shapes, so I just work in rough patches of colour here and there. I'm not really looking too much at the reference photograph, just for an idea of where things should be. Now back in to some of the burnt umber colour, and I want to add some very definite sort of patches of colour on the flipper at the back. Once again, dry brush paint techniques are wonderful for adding depth and detail to your paintings. Once again, a damp brush is all I need, just tidy up a few of those little division lines. One area I take particular care over is painting any kind of facial expression or features. If you can't get this right then, well, somehow it seems to lose a lot of its little character. I take it very carefully and I do a lot of studying of the reference photographs, particularly when it comes to painting the eye and getting the mouth right. I turn that little flat brush on edge and just carefully mark the position first. If I need to add a shadow line, I'll do that in a moment. But for now, I just want to get it accurately positioned on this little sea turtle. This is a green sea turtle. Apparently they can be lots of different colors, including this goldy brown tone. Whichever color they are, they're certainly very cute to look at. For the eye, I have some cobalt blue water mixable oil, but it's a bit bright. So I'll start off with using that just for the initial color, but I'm going to tone it down in a second with some Payne's gray. I nicknamed Payne's gray my chameleon color, simply because when you mix it with a large variety of other colors, it can change their shades and tones it's an extremely useful colour when it comes to painting wildlife because you can take a light brown and turn it to a darker brown 
or you can take a nice light green and turn it into a darker shade of green without affecting the tone too much. Here you see I wanted a blue shadow, but I want it more grey. Payne's grey is the perfect combination of colours for blue. If you haven't got some, I'd advise you to get a tube. It's incredibly useful for painting shadows and works particularly well for glazing. We'll see some of that later on in the painting. Let's look at our reference photograph. Under the neck and throat and on the inside of those front flippers is a lovely transparent turquoise colour. I start with a small amount of titanium white and of course some turquoise. Now one thing to remember is that titanium white isn't particularly opaque when it's used dry. Surprisingly enough, when you scrub it on, it actually becomes quite see-through. Adding a small amount of turquoise restores the opaque property of the white. It seems quite a contradiction, because normally you'd think of white as being the most opaque of colours. However, say so used dry, it isn't. It becomes semi-transparent. There we go. Just another top tip for you. I need to use a fresh clean brush, but I've run out. So if you do need to wash a brush, make sure you dry it absolutely thoroughly on some paper towel before you go back into the water mixable oils. Remember, if they get wet, they turn into slushy wet oil paint and we still want to use them dry. Here you see, I'm using a little touch of Payne's Gray and Turquoise to create a shadow. Remember what I said, it's my chameleon color. It'll mix with almost any other colour to produce a dark shade of that one colour. Working on the shadow line produces the real 3D effect I'm looking for. It's probably one of my most favourite stages of painting wildlife. I sit back, add a little, sit back and add a little more. When you're painting wildlife, it takes a moment or two to sit back and really have a good look at the reference photograph and see if there's any last touches of colour that needed to be added. As I say, it's a lovely process and I've got just four little photographs to remind us of how we started. From a line drawing to the first layers of colour, the first layers of shade and detail, and then finally to adding the shadow lines. With that, my sea turtle is complete. So there we have it, part one of two of the sea turtle painting. Now, if you're not subscribed to the channel, don't forget, go down first and give that little painting a thumbs up, that's a like, and then hit the subscribe button. There's a little bell icon. Click that as well so that when I release a new video, you get a little notification in your inbox. Then you won't miss part two of this painting. In the meantime, Enjoy your week and happy painting people.